Okay, hi everyone. Thank you so much for um, coming in to this session. Um, we will be starting in about two minutes. So um, until then, just hang tight, um, but we'll start in a few minutes. So thank you. All right, everyone, we are going to get started. So welcome to the alumni panel. Um, thank you all for joining in on this session today. My name is Alicia Solis. Um, my pronouns are she, her, and hers. And I just graduated in March with a degree in business administration from Cal Poly. So I'm a new and proud Cal Poly alumni as well. Um, uh, we, I also was one of the open house co-chairs this past year. And on behalf of myself, my co-chair, Amber Sylvester, and my entire committee, we wanna thank you all for joining in on these sessions. And we hope to see you in the fall as a future Mustang. Um, I also want to thank the amazing alumni on this call for volunteering their time to be here today to give you insight into life at Cal Poly and life after Cal Poly. Um, all of these individuals were involved in different majors, different colleges, and were involved in a variety of different extracurriculars around campus. So we hope that we, they give you insight into what you can get involved with inside your major, outside your major, and where these involvements can lead you after um, your graduation. I also want to recognize Camille Erskine, our open house alumni lead. Um, she's been working really hard on this event since October. And while we're really sad that we can't have you in person on campus, um, we're super happy that we still get to have this event virtually. So thank you, Camille. Um, and also we wanted to let you all know that you can submit questions through our question and answer feature on Zoom. Um, we'll be covering it at the end of the session um, and all the questions that we're not able to cover we'll answer through the chat feature as well. So be sure to be checking that. But without further ado, um, let's get started. So panelists, please introduce yourself, your graduation date, your major and in involvements at Cal Poly and um, anything else you would like us to know. Cool, I'll go ahead and start then. Uh, my name is Chris Leary, I was class of 2018. My pronouns are he, him, his. Um, I was a biochemistry major with a minor in industrial technologies and packaging. So that was the College of Science and Math as well as the College of Business. Um, I was involved with new student and transition programs, both through Open House and Week of Welcome. And then through my major, uh, I was involved in undergraduate research for three years, as well as a professional fraternity through my major. Um, and then now I currently am an account manager at Thermos Picture Scientific, uh, which is a biotech company down here in San Diego. Thanks, Chris. Uh, hey, everyone. Thanks for joining today. My name is Anshul. I graduated Cal Poly last June. I was a business administration major with a double concentration in finance and accounting and a minor in psychology. A mouthful, I know. Um, during my time at Cal Poly, I was involved as a president of the Indian Student Association. Um, I was a media relations associate for Division I Cal Poly football and baseball programs. Um, I was part of a professional business fraternity, uh, Delta Sigma Pi, uh, which I loved my time in very much. Um, I was part of Musty Consulting, which is our on-campus student-run consulting firm, and I was also an ambassador for the College of Business. So um, I'd be the person, hopefully, giving a tour to you all when you visited the College of Business. Um, and since once I graduated, I moved to beautiful Lake Tahoe working for uh, a tech startup, weird place to have one. I know um, we are building enterprise software for the investment management industry and founded by Dave Duffield, 
Um, and if you've heard of uh, People Software Workday, um, he founded those companies as well. So I work on our strategy team uh, here at Ridgeline is the name of the company uh, and super excited um, to share some of my experience with you all. Hi everyone, my name is Rebecca Villalobos. Uh, I graduated from Cal Poly in 2018 with a degree in civil engineering. Um, I am actually currently still in slow working at a civil engineering firm called Rick Engineering and I love still being here uh, six or seven years later. Um, during my time at Cal Poly, I was involved in a couple major specific clubs, um, but I really found my home in Cal Poly's orientation programs. Um, I also held two uh, different internships within engineering and then had a couple random off-campus jobs um, to keep my time busy and filled when I was not studying. So, yeah. Thanks. Um, my name's Jesse. I graduated last spring in industrial technology and packaging, which is in the College of Business. Um, and I got a minor in art history, which is in the College of Liberal Arts. Um, I actually came into Cal Poly as a physics major and then switched my major. So for all of you who are wondering if that's possible, it is possible. Um, there is a little bit of a process, but it's definitely possible. Um, during my time at Cal Poly, I was on the lacrosse team, which is part of our club sports. And um, I was also involved in entrepreneurship. So I was on the board for Cal Poly Entrepreneurs Club. And I also had um, a company in the hatchery, which is our on-campus um, incubator. So if you have any questions about entrepreneurship, let me know. Hi everyone, my name is Haley Swanson. I use pronouns she, her, hers. Um, I graduated from Cal Poly last June with a degree in history. Um, during my time at Cal Poly, I was involved with the open house committee. I served as the co-chair for last year's open house committee. So super weird to be back one year later. Um, currently I am pursuing a master's degree in student affairs at Clemson University, go Tigers. So super excited and I can answer any questions you may have just about getting involved or uh, I was also in Cap Alpha Theta, so Greek life as well. Hello everyone, my name is Michael Jaquez. Uh, my pronouns are he, him, his. I graduated in June of 2018 with a degree in animal science with a minor in dairy science. Um, during my time at Cal Poly, I was involved with new student transition programs um, such as Slow Days, Week of Welcome, and um, our college specific open house um, different programming there. Um, I also was an um, employee at Starbucks in the University Union and I worked at the Cal Poly Dairy for a year as well. Um, I'm currently pursuing a master's in agricultural education and my single subject teaching credential um, also at Cal Poly. So I'm back for more. Um, and so if you have any questions about education or agriculture, I'd love to help answer. Hi, I'm Lauren, uh, Lauren Hamilton, and my pronouns are she, her, hers. I graduated in June of 2019, so last year, with my degree in microbiology through the College of Science and Math. At Cal Poly, I was a WOW leader. I did three years of undergraduate research. I was a COSAM ambassador. I was a part of Greek life through Kappa Kappa Gamma. I was part of TEDx, uh, the Undergraduate Research Association, the Biotech Club, the Adventure Club, all, all the clubs. And I also um, was a part of the open house committee and was the other co-chair along with Haley last year. So I am happy to uh, help you with any questions about that. I'm currently at Hardy Diagnostics, a biotechnology company in Santa Maria, so I'm not too far away. Hi everyone, my name is Ali Alvarez and I also was part of the class of 2019. My major was City and Regional Planning, um, which is in the College of Architectural and Environmental Design. Um, while at Cal Poly, I was involved in orientation. I was involved in slow days, um, week of welcome and uh, open house. I was part of the committee that um, put on open house last year. So my co-chairs were Lauren and Haley. Um, additionally, I held um, a job at Starbucks as well. And I uh, was lucky enough to also be a student assistant for the orientation office um, 
I was part of Greek Life for a short time. Um, and I think that's, that's all. If you have any questions, please let me know. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Pratish Panda. Um, I graduated this past December. Uh, I studied industrial engineering. I initially got into Cal Poly for electrical, so I changed my major about two years into college. So if you have any questions about changing your major, uh, you can ask me. Um, right now, I'm working for Procter & Gamble. Uh, if you know about like Tide, Olay, Old Spice, all those great consumer packaging products, uh, they own those and I'm an account manager for them right now. Um, so yeah. Okay, thank you panelists. Um, so our next question is, what are some things you wish you knew at the beginning of your college journey? I can go ahead and start. I think for me, it was just to try as many things as possible. Um, I think, you know, Cal Poly is a great environment where there's a lot of opportunity. And it's also a great environment where you have a lot of room to fail and learn through that and just not being afraid to try as many things as you can. To keep it short, super short and quick on my end, it was to be a yes man or yes woman um, in terms of just going out there and getting as involved as possible and then really finding your um, your niche and what you want to get involved in throughout your college career. Um, I felt like I dove head first into it. Uh, and if you're a freshman next year and you guys are on campus uh, and in your dorm watching, watching Netflix, uh, you're probably doing something wrong. Go out there and there, there's a lot of things to get involved in at Cal Poly. Uh, and I promise you, you're gonna find your place, not to mention it's in one of the most beautiful places in the entire world. Um, I would have to say, and people will probably say this also, but going to office hours was really helpful. I was always very scared to go to office hours and didn't want to talk to my professors at all. And I think uh, during my fifth year, I finally consistently started going to office hours and I wish I would have done that sooner. Um, I'm going to piggyback off of what Chris and Anshul talked about. Um, I think, you know, it's really important to try new things. And I wish I knew that, like, you're not going to know everything going into college, and that's totally okay. You're not going to know what you want to do with your life or what, you know, your major interests are. But the only way you're going to find that out is by trying new things um, and jumping, you know, headfirst into everything. Um, so if there's something you're even, you know, moderately interested in, go to it. I mean, you'll go to so many different things. And even if, you know, it's not your favorite thing, most, you know, clubs and everything give free pizza. So you'll get something out of it. Yeah, I was really homesick my freshman year. And I think that's not something a lot of people say that, like, was a thing for them. Um, and it was something I definitely experienced where I thought no one else was homesick. Um, but I was really homesick, so I thought I was kind of the odd one out. But just know that you're not alone. Like most people, like 98, 99 percent of freshmen, sophomores, juniors, seniors are homesick at some point during the quarter. Um, it gets everyone. So just know that that's totally a normal feeling to have. Something I wish that I knew, um, I wish that I believed people when they told me that four years goes by really fast. Um, and I think I can speak for a lot of us that um, you know, you come in freshman year and then all of a sudden you're graduating. So take advantage of the opportunities that you have at this university. I think for me, it's um, not everything relies on your freshman year. It's really rough being away from home, uh, like Haley said. It's a very big change and so mistakes are okay. You can always recover. And sometimes freshman year isn't your best year. Sometimes it's the time of your life, but know that there's always time to join that club. Even if you don't join your favorite club, your first quarter, they're always looking for new members. And so it's never too late. I think for me, um, something that I wish I would have known was when to say no. I think you heard a lot of us say that we were involved in many different things. Um, and which is great and you will find yourself in that position but you also have to um, learn about yourself a little bit and um, practice self-care i think that's really important um, and so i just wish i would have started that i eventually learned how to do that and you will too um,
but just remember that just because you say no to one thing, that doesn't mean all the doors are closed. There's always going to be more opportunities, like Lauren said, uh, for you to join a club or to take up another extracurricular. Yeah, I agree. And just to pick it back off that, I mean, there's so many opportunities and so many new things that are going to be exposed to you that you just want to jump onto. But I think it's really important to be able to like take a step back and take a look at what you really want to do, what you want to focus your time into, because I think getting the most out of a couple of things is more uh, valuable than getting a little bit out of a lot of things. So thank you so much. Um, so our next question is, did you think the career you're in now was something you would be doing after college? And if not, what changed that for you? And we'll start with Chris. Yeah, um, for me, that was definitely not the case. I went into Cal Poly thinking I'd come out and be doing, you know, research, pursuing a career in research within biochem. Um, and that definitely changed about halfway through. I think, um, you know, part of going to a school at Cal Poly that had so many opportunities was that I was able to find what I actually enjoyed doing. And what I enjoyed doing was more of the business side of that field. But without those kind of opportunities that Cal Poly had, that's definitely not something that I would have been able to find out. Um, for me, working, working in tech, especially on the strategy side of tech, uh, it was definitely one of the things I'd imagined. Um, working at a startup, my dad started his own company about 14 years ago and still runs it uh, right now. And I always had that entrepreneurial side for me uh, because of because of him. Um, I kind of was toying between two different ideas. I always thought I'd go into sports management. So I was between um, working in strategy at a tech startup versus um, going and working for the New York Yankees. And so uh, between those two, between those two jobs, um, if you get to know me, baseball is one of the reasons I exist as a person. Um, and it was really hard for me to turn it down, um, but it just felt like this was the right opportunity right now. Not, not to say that it won't be a, a pivot for me later in my career, but I still stay very close. And um, my college experience has also uh, reflected um, things that I was really, really interested in um, in my life personally. So I work for a baseball team, work for the football team, got exposure to a lot of different areas in that player ops, recruiting, um, baseball operations, statistics, um, all these different things. And so, um, you know, life's always going to be a binary path and then college teach you, teaches you that more than any time before. Uh, and you always have to make a tough choice when it comes to that. I think mine is a little bit of a yes and no. Um, when I went to Cal Poly, I was full force going to be an engineer and my dad was an engineer. So I was like, this is it. And then I got here and it was really, really difficult. Um, my first two years, I, um, spent a lot of time in like the library and studying and I had to really evaluate if it's what I wanted to do and then I got into a major specific class a civil engineering major specific class and I loved it it made sense it clicked and I decided that yes this is what I want to do and so I stayed in my major and now I'm in a career um, in flow in civil engineering and I love it and I'm very glad that I um, stuck it out so yeah. Um, I realized that I forgot to say what I'm doing now in my first intro. Um, so to backtrack a little bit, um, I'm working as a packaging engineer for a small sustainable packaging company called Ecologic. Um, and going into college, I did not think that was what I was going to do. Um, like I said, I came in as a physics major. Um, I wanted to design cars and quickly learned that that's not you know, physics is not the right path for that. I should go into something more engineering. Um, and I had really never thought about packaging at all because it's just like, it's a box and it shows up at your door and that's all there is, but there's so, so much more. And so as I started getting involved in my major and the packaging side, um, and I got involved in entrepreneurship, I knew that pretty much what I wanted to do was be in an entrepreneurial startup environment while doing packaging. Um, and somehow I was able to find that and ended up doing that, but it was definitely a process that I kind of figured out that that's wanted to, what I wanted to do as I, as I went through Cal Poly. 
Um, yeah, growing up, I always wanted to be a teacher. So coming to college, I just picked my favorite subject and sort of ran with it. And then like halfway through my junior year, realized I didn't really like history and did not really see myself teaching children about history for even six months. So I, that's when I kind of went to my um, advisor in new student and transition programs. And he basically sat me down and was like, Haley, you want to go into student affairs. Like you love the work that you do here with open house. And I was like, wow, you're right. So um, that for me was like a total shift and transformation, but um, I just finished my first year of grad school at Clemson and it was definitely the right choice for me. Um, it still has like all those elements of teaching and um, helping people that I loved um, about just like being a traditional like high school teacher, um, but in a realm of work like in higher education that I was found out that I was super passionate about. So kind of a flip flop of that um, narrative we heard, um, I came into Cal Poly wanting to be a large animal veterinarian. Um, that was the goal. And then throughout my time at Cal Poly in those four years, I kind of found that I would rather teach people about agriculture and livestock and the importance that it has to the world versus actually working with those animals as intimately as you would as a large animal vet. So after I graduated, I applied to the um, master's in credential program at Cal Poly so I can I'm pursuing a master's and a teaching credential so that I can teach um, probably high school, um, but teach those students about the importance of agriculture and the role that it plays in their lives and opportunities that they can have in that industry. Um, so I definitely did not see myself um, entering the teaching force, but I'm really excited. Um, and yeah, that's that. I, um, so what I do now is I'm a microbiologist and so I uh, both investigate problems when something goes wrong, if there's any ever anything that's contaminated or not working, that's my job. And I also um, get things cleared through the FDA and the AOAC. So that's really exciting and actually something I didn't even know was a thing um, when I was in school up until the very end when I actually attended some um, presentations by certain companies that actually came to s the school. So I kind of didn't know what I wanted to do when I grew up pretty much most of my uh, college experience. I knew that I had a big passion for microbiology, but that's kind of why my interests were so spread was I wanted to try everything. And I really like what I do know, but uh, without the internships and different things that I learned at Cal Poly, I never would have found it. So I also forgot to mention in the first part what I currently do. Um, I'm currently an assistant planner for the city of Santa Maria, which is 30 minutes south of San Luis Obispo. Um, I was actually a transfer student. So when I went to community college, I was majoring in architecture. Um, I really liked the design aspects of that. Um, when I transferred to Cal Poly, I had an opportunity um, to switch my major, which I did, um, to city and regional planning. Um, and I was interested in urban design. Um, once I got into the program, and especially once I took up an internship with the city of Santa Maria, um, I ended up not doing that. Um, really what working for the public sector um, is and is different is we do a lot of permit streamlining, um, which means we really help with the development within the city. And we um, are really there to make sure that the community um, is receiving development that um, is beneficial for them and really we do a lot of review along those lines. We consider uh, what we call a general plan which maps out um, what the city is going to look like and so that's really different than urban design. I didn't really think that that's what I'd be doing um, but I've really enjoyed it and um, I don't necessarily design the developments that come in but I do get to review them um, so there's a little bit of that involved. Yeah, um, so I came to Cal Poly initially as an electrical engineer and I always had this idea of going to grad school to pursue an MBA afterwards and go into more of the business side of things. Um, but I quickly found out that electrical engineering just wasn't my cup of tea. And so I made the switch to industrial engineering um, the end of my sophomore year. And the process was uh, fairly straightforward just because it was another major within the College of Engineering. So that made it um, fairly simple to kind of make that switch. 
Um, but now I'm not even working within engineering. I was applying for internships my junior year on Handshake, which is a great resource for um, everyone to use to find other uh, internships or full-time positions after graduation. And I applied for almost everything that I could find. And I got an internship with Procter & Gamble through that way and ended up taking a full-time position with them at the end of my internship. And so even though I'm not really doing anything engineering related, I am super involved in the business side of things with the company and that's where my interests lie. And I think um, making the transition and being able to find something that I'm truly passionate about, giving the resources that I was uh, provided on campus was really beneficial. Thank you, panelists. Um, so our next question is, how did you balance your workload and practice self-care during your college career? Uh, I think for me, one of the big things was making sure I had a healthy support system um, from that included both just checking in, remembering that my parents still exist, and then also just, you know, making sure that I had friends that I could go to and rely on. Um, I think pretty much every, all the friends that I had were close friends in college are still close friends now. You can meet some really amazing people at Cal Poly, and those were definitely people that you know, when things got busy, I could turn to when I needed to just either vent or chill or just needed someone there. I think uh, there's so many things to do on campus, um, but not just on campus, off campus as well. So um, finding your happy place uh, in slow for me, like I'd go out and um, play nine or 18 holes of golf every once in a while. And that was kind of what kept me sane throughout college. I um, mean, we have so many beautiful golf courses in the area. Um, but just just find something that keeps you sane and uh, going from high school to college is such a time of like transformation and change in your life. Um, the biggest changes, honestly, is you're still doing school, but you're also taking care of your laundry. You're also taking care of your food. You're also taking care of your self hygiene, like all those different things that like you're taking care of on your own. Uh, and so I think for me, uh, the biggest way to find balance was just find something that keeps you happy uh, while you're at school. So I'm a huge fan of Cal Poly's Recreation Center um, because I'm still on slow. I still use it and uh, unfortunately I'm not using it right now, but um, it is my favorite gym that I've ever worked out at. Um, it's nice just to get in there and clear your head. So definitely getting active, um, getting outside, going on runs, things like that um, were crucial for me. Um, for me, it was definitely being part of the lacrosse team. Um, like Ancha was saying, like having something that you can go to to clear your mind um, and really like there's nothing better than just being able to run around and get all the stress out and also like having um, the accountability of being on a team. I couldn't, you know, tell myself, oh, you know, just keep studying or you have to do this or that because the truth is, is that you're not gonna get much from studying for six hours straight. You're just not, you need a break. And making myself take that break every day to go to practice and run around and get all the endorphins and everything, um, that was really huge. And also like having, um, you know, the team aspect of it. I mean, these people became my best friends and, and kind of influenced my entire college career. Um, and I completely agree with Rebecca, the, um, rec center is amazing totally take advantage of that because uh, as soon as you're gone you're gonna miss it a lot yeah i will echo what a lot of people have said about exercise and just even if you're not like a working out kind of person just like letting yourself go outside um walking around campus itself is a workout so you don't really need to do like day on any given day because you'll hear cal poly calves is a phrase that's used a lot definitely a thing um, but beyond that, something that really helped me um, kind of balance my workload and help with self-care is really just um, giving myself grace and the like giving myself patience when I was struggling and also reaching out to people, um, close friends and letting them know that I was struggling and that I did need help. Um, I think in that way you can build a support network for yourself in slow. So other than um, the rec center, which I also heavily used, um, something that I found that really helped me was being present in whatever I was doing. So if I was in class, that was putting 
um, you know, as much of my effort towards studying in class and taking notes and things like that, or if it was um, going to the gym to kind of clear my head a little bit, I just enjoyed being there and didn't think about school. So for me, it was kind of compartmentalizing different aspects of my life so that everything didn't seem like it was so crazy or so wild all at once. So that definitely really helped a lot. For me, uh, it was a combination of really listening and listening to myself for what my organization system was and that changed and it wasn't always perfect. Uh, but really finding out whether you're a planner person where you want to buy a physical planner or if you're a person who wants to use your Google Calendar or whatever your system is, finding one and trying to stick to it is really helpful because you don't have your parents necessarily reminding you or like your school issued planner, you kind of have to figure out your system for yourself. But beyond that, I would say similar to other people, it's uh, finding something that you're really passionate about, like exercise wise, there's tons of beautiful hikes around Cal Poly, there's architecture uh, village, which is uh, right down the way over by Poly Canyon village, and it's beautiful. I really uh, resonated I taught aerial silks classes and performed and that was really great for me because it was the science and the art got to mix, which was super cool. So it's really just kind of allowing yourself to take the tools you have and customize them for you. Um, I can definitely echo what um, other people have said. Um, exercise is a really good way. Um, I think for me, um, it was definitely just getting outside and um, I, I had a lot of classes I had to take because I wasn't here uh, at Cal Poly for all four years. I was only there for three years. Um, and so I really definitely had to find places on campus that um, were spaces for me to just take a mental break from everything that was going on. And so the great thing about Cal Poly is that it's such a big campus. Um, I ended up finding a great run out towards the dairy, so out towards the agricultural fields, and um, I would just put on my running shoes and go on that run and really enjoy that uh, part of campus that as, an as a city regional planning major, I didn't necessarily ever get to go to. Um, so you don't have to necessarily leave campus to find those spaces for yourself. Um, I think finding balance is super important, especially in college when there's things that change constantly. There are some weeks that are um, super heavy on the workload. You might have um, three midterms one week and another week you might not have anything going on. And I think that it comes down to finding the organization. I mean, like Lauren said, like um, focusing on managing your time and being able to allocate that based on what needs to get done and what you really like to do. And whether it's spending time at the rec or hanging out with your friends, um, being able to do the things that you like, as well as taking care of the things that you need to take care of, um, allows you to get that balance. And I think that's super important. Thank you, panelists, for your great insight. Um, our next question is, how has Cal Poly prepared you to succeed in your career? Um, I think one of the big things for me, and I'm sure everyone here can speak to something similar, is the learn by doing philosophy was huge. Um, I don't work in a lab. I haven't worked in a, I haven't been in a lab in a couple of years to do work. But because of all of the practical classes I had as a biochem major, I'm still comfortable talking to scientists about being in a lab. I'm still comfortable when I do go into lab. Um, and just that kind of like hands-on experience is something that has really been invaluable. Uh, as well, I think one of the things that Cal Poly gave, at least for me, was an opportunity to get some quote-unquote real-world skills. Um, you know, you might not think about it, but like something as simple as just like sending an email to an organization that you don't know or whether it's you know oh i need to set up a meeting and how do i like put together a meeting agenda to like go through these things um and there's you know open house committee was a great opportunity to get those skills but there's a lot of organizations like that at cal poly that give you that kind of quote unquote real world experience that really really i think sets people up well I think every alumni on this call is going to have uh, learned by doing experiences from their first day on campus, first class they ever took to the very last class. Um, but one thing that really stands out for me from Cal Poly is uh, the outstanding alumni network. Um, you know, almost every alumni that I've met has thoroughly enjoyed their time um, at Cal Poly. And when you do a cold LinkedIn reach out or someone introduces you to a Cal Poly alum, whether they're 40 years out of college or one year out of college, 
um, they're more than happy to engage with you and help you in any way uh, that they possibly can. Um, and so I personally tried to embody that, try and take some time out of my day to um, pay it forward. Um, but the rich alumni network from scientists and mathematicians to athletes, to very, very successful business people, um, there are just an incredible um, group of Cal Poly alumni that are waiting to uh, get an email from you and help you out. So um, definitely use that and tap that out. Uh, big thing I got out of Cal Poly. Uh, for me, I think that my senior project was probably the highlight of being prepared for um, my career. Um, my senior project was actually to uh, it's a project that will be built and we took it from stage one where we were proposing on the project. We were trying to win the project to final design and construction documents. Um, and that's what I do now in my career. So being able to go in with that sort of experience and be able to apply the knowledge that I learned on campus to my first day at uh, my work, it was fantastic and it set me up in a really good spot. Um, in addition, holding leadership roles in whatever organizations you choose to get involved in, um, it provides you with so many of the soft skills that make you that much more uh, marketable to companies and uh, potential future employers. Um, being able to, like Chris said, write an email or speak uh, fluently and coherently in a presentation setting um, really does wonders. So taking the academic opportunities, but also going ahead and using the opportunities that you're provided in your extracurriculars really helps. Excuse me. Um, so I'm sure you guys are probably getting sick of hearing learn by doing, um, but just get used to it because you're going to hear it for the next four years. And it's one of those things like when you're at Cal, Cal Poly and it's, you know, everywhere around, you don't know, realize like how unique it actually is. There are a lot of colleges. I mean, most schools don't have that same philosophy um, and give you that same experience. And I think, you know, for me, one of the hardest things um, in terms of like your career is getting that first internship because everybody, you know, every interview they ask, oh, what's your work experience? And you're like, I haven't had work experience. That's why I'm here to get work experience. Um, but being able to talk about real projects that you did in a lab and, you know, real people that you worked with and you led this group and being able to walk them through that whole thing, that is just as good as work experience. Um, and I agree, the alumni network is amazing. That's how I'm in my job currently. Um, our COO um, is a Cal Poly alum, and um, but also the people that are on campus currently really take advantage of all the people here because they really want to help you. And if you know, maybe they're not the right person to talk to, but they'll find the right person to talk to, and they'll introduce you. And maybe it'll take you know three or four of those introductions but you can get that from Cal Poly. Um, so really take advantage of, of what you have here and, and the people and build those relationships because it will help you in the future. There are so many things I could say right now, but um, I do agree, learn by doing uh, really rings true. Um, I will say though, just in my case, I am in the College of Liberal Arts and I think there's a perception that learn by doing isn't quite as present in the College of Liberal Arts. And I will say um, that is absolutely not true. Um, as far as being a history major goes, there are on-campus archives that I spent at least three of my major courses during my time at Cal Poly, like in the archives um, at least one class period a week working with like actual like historical documents um, from Cal Poly's history. So it was also a really cool way to feel more connected to the university. Um, and then just being at another university right now, both as an employee and as a student, um, I will say that like the responsibility and the trust that Cal Poly staff and faculty um, just in general have in Cal Poly students really is quite remarkable and there really is nothing like it um, because I have have not experienced that same level of responsibility or trust as a graduate student um, at my current institution. So I will say that Cal Poly is really unique in that um, they know that their students are more than capable at a lot of amazing things. So I never mentioned um, that I'm completing my student teaching currently at a high school in Bakersfield, Miramonte High School. 
um, as part of my master's and credential program. Um, and so as you know, with the quarantine that's been set in place, um, all, the dis all of the learning that we're doing is um, via distance learning. And um, along with what everyone else has said, that learn by doing, um, there was nothing known about distance learning. I just had to do it. And um, during this time, finding how to best present new course content to my students in a virtual setting and figuring out how I can best support them um, is something that I don't think I would have been as successful at if I didn't have that learn by doing mindset and just, um, you know, doing your best with what you have. And so I think that that, um, although I am not technically in a career yet, but I will be soon, um, that has definitely prepared me for my future as an educator. So you've heard learn by doing, but I'm going to introduce you to another Cal Polyism, which is you get out of it what you put into it. So that's not just in your classes, but that's also really for Cal Poly as a whole, because like Haley said, there is a lot of trust and a lot of there's a lot of liberty you have as a Cal Poly student that you wouldn't necessarily have at other universities. As a freshman, you can join a research lab, and that's not just for the College of Science and Math, that's for pretty much every college. All of these professors are looking for different people to join them, and whether you're looking for a career that involves research, mine does, so that was super helpful for me, so I felt very prepared for that, or not, um, that research experience is going to give you your expertise within your field to speak to those experts. Whether or not you're involved in a lab or if you're involved in research for history or research for anything else, those things are really helpful. But also knowing that when you join any new company, any new job, you're not going to be 100% prepared. So no matter what, you have the skills because you got them when you were at school, but you also, there will be a learning curve. You're never going to be familiar with the exact programs a company is going to use or any of that information. And so like we said earlier, giving yourself grace even in that. Um, I'm also going to uh, echo a lot what everyone else has said about learn by doing. Um, I was lucky enough to be part of various organizations on campus and um, hold leadership positions. Um, these leadership positions really pushed me to understand how to present myself in a professional manner. Um, that was very helpful for me when I was applying for my internship and that really um, catapulted my career when it came to being uh, brought on to the team full time. Um, I know that my boss uh, is also a Cal Poly alum and so she recognizes that um, a lot of what we do is um, learn by doing. I, I mean, you have to be able to, at least in my profession, is go through the process of uh, streamlining a permit, talking to applicants and developers, um, and also talking to the community. And so that professionalism is very, very important because you have to be considerate of, um, of everyone involved. And so that's something that I, I really got out of Cal Poly. So I want to go ahead and emphasize learn by doing one more time just because you can't get enough of it. Um, I think that whether you're in the classroom in a club or whether you're trying to find out something about your like particular field of study, it may apply to your future job if you pursue in that industry or it may not. But I think one of the biggest things you take away from Cal Poly is that you end up becoming a better learner than you would at any other school just because you're so prepared to just take what's in front of you and execute and just take it on full on and then take any learnings that come afterwards and i think that being a better learner and a better doer is something that's super valuable in the workforce awesome thank you panelists so i think we are going to move on to the q a portion because we've gotten a lot of great questions um thank you everyone for submitting them um, so for all of the panelists, what would you say is the difference between Cal Poly academics compared to the University of California system academics? Um, I don't think anyone has really touched on this yet, but Cal Poly has a really big emphasis on learn by doing. Um, that, you know, you, if we can, I don't think we can stress it enough as people, you know, who have recently entered the workforce from, um, you know, from Cal Poly, it's been a huge leg up to have that experience uh, as well for me, you know, I work with people on my team that 
they they went to UCs and UCs are great schools, um, but they didn't quite get all of the same opportunities to explore things outside of their major or outside of like their kind of small niches um, and didn't really know what they were looking to do, I guess, as soon as that, as, as soon, if that makes sense. Um, they went into one field and a lot of them, a common story is, oh, you know, I worked for five years in a lab and I realized I didn't want to be in a lab. I wanted to be in the business side of the industry. And that's through the opportunities I had at Cal Poly. That's something that I was able to figure out that I, you know, going to a different school, going to not Cal Poly, I wouldn't have had those same opportunities to really learn what I want to do through the opportunities presented. Um, this is a really exciting question for me because in all my time giving tours as a college business ambassador, this was the most popular question that we would get. Um, first and foremost, the largest lecture hall on Cal Poly's campus is 225 students. And that too is in the College of Business and I've only ever had uh, one class in that building. And so the student to faculty ratio is pretty much like you're in high school, which is really, really exciting in the terms of how much face time you get with your with the, with the faculty. And the second thing that I love to highlight is um, talking to friends that go to schools in the UC system, it's extremely competitive to the point where it becomes detrimental. So that if, if I want to get an A, that means you can't get an A. It's a very much a zero sum game. And the analogy I love to use to describe this phenomenon, is if you have a pie um, and every single person uh, wants to get as much of the pie as possible, the pie is going to run out. But at Cal Poly, everyone works to make the pie bigger. So it's not a zero sum game. Everyone can have an equal part of the pie uh, and everyone just will work together uh, to make it bigger. Um, a tangible experience for this is when I was in, we call it the business lab, which is our like makeshift library where everyone studies in the college of business. Um, and I was struggling on a, I was struggling on a project and someone came over and offered a helping hand said, I never met them before, but they offered to help on my project. And there was, there was no strings attached, right? Um, and on the flip side, I, I've done the same thing several times when I see someone struggling on a project in a class that I had taken before. Um, I try to uh, lending out, lend out a helping hand uh, and see if I can help them in any way possible. So I think that's the biggest takeaway from being a student, especially in the college business for four years. But as Cal Poly as a whole, like you really, you really feel that sense of um, coming together, um, com competing, but also coming together. So when I was applying to colleges, my first choice was actually a UC um, and I got into it and I got into Cal Poly also. Um, and at the time, Cal Poly was my absolute last choice um, that I was looking at. I just didn't really feel like I loved the campus when I visited. I think I visited when it was foggy um, and it just wasn't wasn't a great visit for me. Um, but I came to open house and I was able actually to talk to some professors and that engagement of professors, um, even at open house, um, was really cool just to see. Um, and so while I don't have experience really with any UC uh, academics, um, the value and like the education that you get at Cal Poly um, and the availability of professors and people um, that were willing to help you and teach you um, is uh, something you can't beat. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I think one of the things um, that really sets Cal Poly apart is how approachable everyone is. Um, all the professors um, and, and everyone you kind of come across. I think, you know, that was one of the big things for me. Like when I really realized that was actually um, over the summer of like my junior year or something, I had this great business idea and I was like, this is going to be, you know, the next big thing. And I actually called one of my professors who had already retired. Um, and he picked up the phone and talked to me for like an hour to work through it. So it's not something that goes away. And because you're in these smaller classes that you get to know your professor and that a lot of the professors, you know, they're just there to teach. They're not doing, you know, a, a research project and this is their you know secondary thing they're here to teach and you'll have them multiple times for multiple classes and you'll get to know them um, and I can't tell you how many professors I had that you know would lead into um, you know their intro talking about you know they did this 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 and this already in their career and they we're going to retire, but decided that they like what they do way too much. So they're going to teach and decided Cal Poly. Um, 
So I think that you really do get these people that have amazing experiences and are willing to talk to you about it and get you in touch with, you know, anybody, anything that they can do to help you succeed, they will do. And that's, that's truly amazing. I think everyone at the university as a whole, whether it's your RA, someone you're in a club with, your faculty member, um, anyone at the university is really invested in you as a person. And I think that lends itself to academic success and just personal growth as a whole. So I think just the natural like environment and culture of support and encouragement at Cal Poly um, really makes it a collaborative um, culture. Okay, awesome. We'll move on to the next question. Um, this one's for Haley. So how good is the history program at Cal Poly in preparing you for a career in education? Sorry, Alicia, can you repeat that? My internet cut out a little bit when you asked the question. No, it's okay. Um, how good is the history program at Cal Poly in preparing you for a career in education? Yeah, um, I think the history program at Cal Poly has a really big emphasis on writing and research, which is um, something Am I good to keep answering the question, Alicia? Go ahead. <laughs> Sorry, my internet keeps dropping me today. Um, so I was saying just the history program at Cal Poly really emphasizes uh, writing and research. And so I developed um, a lot of really great skills um, in both of those areas, which is a huge part of education and higher education in general. And really, I just think in any career you need to know how to write a decent email at least. Um, but I've really been prepared just in terms of my critical thinking skills, um, putting together, you know, a 50 page research paper for my senior project based off of a research question I developed myself. Um, I think all of those skills just have really helped me prepare for a career in education as a whole. So I can't speak to the history portion of the question, but as a current um, student that's in the credential program at Cal Poly, um, again, I have felt really supported as um, a student teacher and as a future educator, especially during a lot of these really uncertain times um, with distance learning specifically and the resources that were offered to us as student teachers, um, as well as I think the experience that we receive through our um, student teaching, that all really prepares you well for your future as an educator. Thank you. Um, so this one's for anyone in engineering. Um, as an engineering student, is going to Cal Poly for in-state full price tuition worth the investment compared to a cheaper option? Yes. I definitely think so. Um, I additionally took a fifth year victory lap. Um, so I ended up paying for five years of tuition, but it was totally worth it and I wouldn't trade it for anything. Um, there's so many opportunities to get involved in engineering um, specific clubs. Um, for civil engineering, there's concrete canoe where we literally build a canoe out of concrete and then uh, people on our team uh, race other concrete canoes. Um, and those are in the engineering, some of the engineering plazas. Um, so I think it's not only just the education that you're getting, um, but also the opportunities to be in those hands-on projects um, that really, really um, make the difference in your engineering, engineering career. 
Awesome. And this is our last question and it's for Michael. Um, can you please touch on the application process and workload of a master's program? So uh, it's a lot different. Um, the difference between undergraduate versus graduate education. Um, as an undergraduate student, 12 units are required to be full time. And as a grad student, it's, I believe, only nine, might be eight. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so the workload is a little bit different because you have different um, you have different responsibilities that you're um, in charge of, whether that's um, your uh, thesis, so your research that you're doing, the project that you're creating, um, a comprehensive exam that you're taking and working towards. Um, so the application was actually quite simple. It was your grades, um, a statement about why you wanted to be in the program, and that was really it. Um, but then as far as the workload, um, my situation is, is a little bit different because I was, I'm technically part of the credential and a master's program. So the classes that I take, um, I have more units technically. Um, but um, it's a really good opportunity to really get into the nitty gritty of exactly that specific area of an industry that you're interested in. So agricultural education is a really specific area of agriculture in general. Um, so that's really all I have to say about the master's program. Awesome. Well, that is our alumni panel. Um, can we give a virtual round of applause for the panelists? Um, uh, we want to thank everyone for attending this session. This was our first ever alumni panel and it was a success. Um, so thank you and thank you to our panelists again. Um, they will be, um, some of them will be writing in their emails if you have questions about anything related to their major or involvements on campus jobs, anything like that that they talked about. Um, and yeah, we hope to see you all as Mustangs in the fall. So thank you everyone for attending and have a great rest of your night.
right, we are all done. Madison, could you press stop recording? Or Alicia, I forget who 